Good morning, everyone. Great to be back in church. We, uh, we're excited to see you here this morning and uh, just uh, thankful that you've come out to worship. That's, I pray that's what we do. We come to worship and, and uh, praise the Lord. We, uh, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer this time. Father, we do thank you for all you do for us. God, thank you that we can come and gather together as a family and, and uh, Lord, just to uh, praise you and to uh, slow our lives down and be mindful of all that you do for us. Lord, I pray today that you would just uh, be with us in this service in a mighty way. God, just uh, just move and touch hearts. Uh, we pray that you would just uh, be with our preacher. God, just use him in a special way today and help him to proclaim your word and help us to listen, to take your word, to apply it to our hearts and lives, to walk with you, Lord, just to uh, be constantly in praise. Lord, be with those that cannot be here today. We ask you to just meet their needs, and may they feel your presence in their life. Lord, lead us and guide us in all that we do, for it's in Christ's name. Amen. If you have a bulletin, I'd like for you to look at your bulletin for just a minute. Lots of things going on this month, so just narrow them down to a week at a time. You get overwhelmed if you don't. Uh, tonight, inviting everyone to come back out and... Uh, Enjoy our Thanksgiving Christmas dinner, just a time of fellowship as a church family, and uh, it's a covered dish meal. We ask you to please bring uh, items that you would like to prepare and bring, and we have the meat being provided by the church. 5.30. Monday night, women's Bible study at 6.30. Uh, they would always invite you to come and take part in that. Wednesday night, Bible study. Still in chapter 1 of Nehemiah, we covered about four verses the other night. But we had a great Bible study, and I say that because I want you to come. Uh, I know you'd love it. It's very informal, and the preacher wants you to study and then be able to participate in the, in the conversation that takes place and share what you've gleaned from the Word and how it spoke to your heart. So I would encourage all of you to try to come. That'll happen Wednesday night, and then afterwards we do have choir practice as we prepare for our, our Christmas cantata. Next Saturday, uh, the folks that have signed up will be going to Atlanta for the uh, shoebox packing, and uh, we would uh, hope that if you're not going, you'll be praying for us as we travel. We're going to leave the church here at 9 o'clock. Um, I guess it would be helpful to us. We have a list. I guess it's still out front. Okay. If you would let Kim know if your plans have changed. If you can go, she needs to know. If you can't go, she needs to know. Because we're trying to cover the transportation. Uh, we have our church van. We have the associational church van on standby if we need it. So we, we, the quicker we know, the quicker we can get them gassed up and be prepared to to leave. So if you know your plans, whether you're going or not, please let Miss Kim know if it's, uh, if it's different. That would be helpful. Um, next Sunday, a lot going on in the afternoon. Again, would invite you to uh, plan to participate in that if you can. We're going to go out Christmas caroling. We've got a list, quite, quite a few names of folks that we're going to try to appear in their front yard or, or at their nursing home room or wherever we can get to and we want to sing and and uh, uh, share the, the Christmas joy with those folks so three o'clock we'll leave the church and go do that and then we'll come back here for a candlelight service at six o'clock those are a, those are a beautiful service I invite you all to plan to be at that and then after the uh, candlelight service we will have our Christmas party in the back and gift exchange and a time for more snacks Kind of a kind of a main theme to all this, isn't it? A lot of eating going on. Ah, that's what we do. Um, remember, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is now uh, in effect. And we would encourage you to participate in that. The tree that's out front, uh, those envelopes, they got a number on them that corresponds with uh, how much money we want you to put back in that envelope and turn it back in. And I think uh, I think some of the guys have already grabbed up all the ones and twos and threes. So. <laughs> You got to go a little higher than that. But we would love it if you could participate, and certainly we know that money goes to 
uh, take care of missionary needs, and it's an important offering to uh, to be a part of. Our church goal is five thousand dollars, and we we normally reach that. So I I encourage you to participate. Uh, good to see this man sitting over here this morning. Hadn't seen Troy. We, we visited in his home, but I hadn't seen him here in church in a while and hadn't been able to be here. So thankful to see you, Troy. Glad you're here. Glad to be here. Amen. Any announcements that have not been made that uh, you need to make at this time? All right, we'll continue with our service. We're going to start by singing Joy to the World. It's page 87 in your hymn book. We're also going to have it on the screen. Page 87, Joy to the World.
to sin. Yes, Brother Doug, he brings us a message. God help us to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name.
good to be back in God's house again this morning. It's good to be saved. Good to see everybody out. I hope everybody's had a good week. You know, I'd like to thank the Lord for the good rain that He blessed us with. You know, we don't like getting out in the rain, you know, but think about it. We can go to Walmart in the rain, can't we? We can go on vacation in the rain. So why can't we go to come to God's house in the rain? You know, we've been in a drought. We need to thank God for the rain. He knows what we need this morning. It's good to be here this morning in God's house. Good to have my wife back with me. I can't believe I forgot to tell her Wednesday night. I missed her so bad last Sunday not being here with me. It's good to have her back. And you know, she's the first person I told when God started dealing with me to preach. Me and her, we're, we're in this together. The Bible tells when you become married, you become one flesh. I don't see how someone makes it without their wife supporting them in the ministry. I appreciate my wife going with me and supporting me. It's good to be here this morning. If you have your Bibles this morning, got one verse of Scripture found in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. If you want to stand when you find your place in honor of reading God's Word. I've been thinking all week of what Jesus lay aside. What he left behind. Think about that. We're entering the Christmas season. There's some things that Jesus had never endured before. There's some things that Jesus never experienced before. What are you talking about, preacher? Jesus had never felt no pain or sorrow. Think about it. We think about him coming to the manger, born in the manger. He was born in the manger. What was the purpose? To die on the cross. He had never felt no pain, no sorrow, never been hungry, never been thirsty. Yet on the cross, He said, I thirst. Never been separated from His Father. Think about it. This is some thoughts that I thought about this way. Jesus was rich, folks, but He was willing to become poor. Why? For my sins... Your sins and the sins of the whole world. Just think about what this one verse is saying. I can't preach this one verse out today. There's more in it than I can get out. So pray for me this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 it says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes... He became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich. You may be seated. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this good day that you blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. We just pray, Lord, that you'll just be with us just for a little while. Lord, give me the words to say this morning. Lord, I'm depending on you. We just pray that you just search hearts if they be in need here this morning, Lord. Whatever it might be, you just speak to that heart, Lord. We just ask this in Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. Pray for me as I try to preach the message that God put on my heart. You know, sometimes you say, well, the preacher didn't do too good. The preacher can preach without you praying for me, but I can preach better if you pray for me. So pray for me this morning that I'll preach the message that God put on my heart. Folks, I don't, I don't pretend to be an expert at this. I'm just a little country boy called by the grace of God. I don't know why God called me to preach. I ask Him every day, what are you, why did you call me, Lord? Don't you worry about it. He says, you preach the gospel. So that's what I'm doing, folks, preaching the gospel. So pray for me this morning. What a picture we have here of God's marvelous grace in this verse here. Grace is God's unmerited favor of love. Boy, I thought about that. There's nothing I could do to deserve salvation. Think about it. There's no, no good works that I could do. I couldn't work hard enough. I couldn't do anything to deserve heaven. Nobody could. Nothing we could do. I deserve judgment. I deserved hell. But boy, I thought of that. Because of God's grace, because of God's love, because of God's mercy, guess what? He provided a way of escape, folks. A way that we could go to heaven through His Son coming down here and dying on the cross for our sins. Is that not something to be happy about this morning? 
Folks, we don't have to go to that awful place called hell. We got heaven that we can go to because Jesus was willing to come. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift from God. Boy, I thought about that gift. We're entering the giving season. Read on over to the next chapter, chapter 9, verse 15. I think Paul says, thanks be unto God for this unspeakable gift. You ever thought about that gift? God gave us the best gift that we could ever receive. Folks, when He gave us His Son to come down here and die on the cross for us, we all worry about giving that special gift over Christmas. Let me tell you the best gift that you could give someone. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the plan of salvation. Tell them how to be saved. Folks, that's the gift that keeps on giving. Think about the love the Father had for us. Would you send your son down here to die for a world that for the most part was going to reject you, that was going to spit on you, that was going to mock you, beat you and nail you to a cross? Would you do that? God loved us, folks, when we were unlovable. Think about the love of God. Think about the grace of God this morning. Boy, that jumped out to me, the grace of God. I'm thankful that God was willing to send His Son down here to die on the cross for my sin. The Bible says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the question I want you to ask yourself. Have you experienced that grace this morning? If you've been saved, you've experienced that grace. But if you've never experienced that grace, you've never been saved. If if you've never been saved, you've never experienced that grace this morning. Think about it. God gave this gift. But when you give a gift to someone, they can either receive that gift or reject it. Folks, God has done all that He can do. He provided His Son to come down here and die on the cross for our sins. And it's up to us whether we receive this gift or reject it. It's totally up to us. Think about that. We have a choice to make, each and every one of us, to make this choice. This life is only a preparation place for where you're going to spend eternity. You're going to spend eternity somewhere, folks, in heaven or hell. But God has provided a way that we can escape that awful place called hell through His Son coming down and dying on the cross. Folks, that's what Christmas is about. It's not about the baby in the manger. That's just the way Jesus had to get here to take on this old flesh. It's all about the cross. And Jesus died on the cross. It says, though He was rich. Let's think for a minute how rich our Lord and Savior, was. I thought about this 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 week. I don't think I can comprehend my little puny mind how rich our Lord and Savior really was. Think about it, folks. What He sacrificed when He come down to this old sinful world. We get a picture of what heaven's like in Revelation. I thought about that. John says that there's a street paved with pure gold. There's walls of jasper. There's gates of pearl. It ain't pearls. Read your Bible. One pearl makes one gate. Folks, think about that. There's a river of life flowing. There's a tree of life growing. Think about that. There's a throne of God with a rainbow with all kinds of colors. Think about how beautiful heaven is. We can't picture how beautiful, we can't picture how rich our Lord and Savior was. But boy, I thought about the creation. We talked about this in Sunday school just a little bit. I can get out and I can look at the, God's beautiful creation. Think about that. I told them in Sunday school, I ride horses if nobody don't know that. And I'll get out by myself and you talk about having a good time. Just me, the Lord, a dog, and a horse. And boy, I get out. I headed out Thursday. In two hours, I can be under the parkway. I got up there on top and I started looking around. Two inches of snow on the ground. And you talk about having a good time. And Lord, I got my little New Testament Bible out of my saddlebags and I started reading God's Word up on top of the mountain. Folks, you talk about it got real. That's what I'm talking about. You can look around and see God's beautiful creation. The creeks, the mountains, the rivers. 
the oceans and tell me there's no God. I can see God everywhere I look. Think about it. Think about how rich our Savior is. He created it all, folks. He owns it all. Listen to what Colossians says, chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. Boy, I like this verse 17. Listen to this. And and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. What is that telling us? Folks, Jesus not only created everything. He, He can say, I created all the gold. It is mine. He said, all the silver is mine. Folks, what about all the diamonds? All the precious jewels, the sapphires, the rubies. What about all of our natural resources from the trees we cut down to the minerals we take out of the ground? Guess who owns them? Our Lord and Savior, He owns them. That's an idea. That's a picture of how rich our Lord and Savior was. Think about how rich He was. That verse 17 said, By Him all things consist. You know what consist means? That means He holds it together. He not only created everything, He not only owns everything, folks, but He holds it together. You know why the sun comes up every morning? Because Jesus is in control. You know why it sets every evening? Jesus is in control. Folks, you know why we remain the exact temperature that we need to remain? Jesus is in control. Think about it, folks. If we was any closer to the sun, guess what? We would burn up. We would become a desert. Any farther away, and we'd become a frozen Arctic. Boy, I'm glad that Jesus is in control. Aren't you? I'm sick and tired of hearing about global warming, folks. It's not going to happen unless Jesus allows it to happen. Think about that. It ain't going to happen. I'm not saying it could happen, but he would have to allow it to happen for it to happen. Jesus is in control this morning. See how rich our Lord and Savior really is. The Bible says, Yet for your sakes he become poor. Notice why Jesus came. What did Paul tell us there? For your sakes... He become poor. Think about that, folks. Jesus, who owned everything, was willing to leave his exalted position by his Father and come down to this old sinful earth and go through the most harsh, cruel death that's ever been faced by anybody. Think about it. Why did he do that? Paul tells us, for our sake. Guess what? Doug Mathis was lost. He was needing a Savior, folks. We were all lost. Jesus came down because He loved us. He came for our sakes. See, after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, man had a problem. Sin drove a wedge, created a barrier between us and God. We could never reach God in this condition. Think about it. Nothing we could do. Only God. See, we had to send that, folks. Enormous sin debt that only God could pay. Think about it. That enormous sin debt. What did God do? He came down to our level. Jesus Himself walking on this old earth for 33 and a half years folks, was the same as God Himself walking on the earth. God knows what you're going through this morning. Why? Because His Son Walked on this earth. Oh, he felt pain. He felt sorrow. Think about it. He got hungry. He got tired. He got thirsty. Jesus can identify with us. Oh, God the Father can identify with us through His Son. Think about that this morning. All the Old Testament sacrifices, they never removed sin. All they did was cover sin up All they did to point to to Jesus who would come and take away the sins. See, sin was confessed. 
It was covered, but it was never canceled. Think about it, folks, until that pure Lamb of God. Think about that. The pure Lamb of God. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. Folks, when that Lamb comes, when He died on the cross, He took away the sins of the world. No more little lambs would ever have to die. I think about that all the time. Think about all the little lambs that had to die year after year continuously. No more little lambs would ever have to die. When Jesus, the Lamb of God, come down and died on the cross for our sin. Why did He die? For our sakes. Jesus come down for our sakes. The Bible says He become poor. Think about that. Jesus stepped off the throne... He took off his robe and his crown and told his father, you prepare me a body and I will go and become a servant. I will go and become poor is what Jesus is saying. I thought about that. Think about knowing in advance how much you was going to have to suffer. Jesus knew in advance how much you was going to have to suffer. He knows all things. Think about that this morning. But I'll become poor. I thought about that. I don't think we can really comprehend how rich Jesus is. I can't. I tried to add it up. We can't calculate how rich He was. But boy, when we get to studying God's Word, we can see how poor Jesus became. Think about that, folks. The King of all kings. The Lord of all lords. Where was He born? Think about that. In a manger. In a borrowed stable. Our Lord and Savior come. I read about that, folks. It ain't no wooden barn, more than likely. You know what it was? It was a cave dug out in the side of a mountain. A cold, dark cave. He was born in a manger. You think about, well, that nice wood manger with hay. It wasn't a nice wood manger with hay, probably. You know what it was? Probably a rock feeding trough. I read where most of the time they built them out of rock. A cold, hard. Manger is where our Lord and Savior was born. Think about that, folks. Born to the poorest of poor families. Born in the poverty, if you want to say. Our Savior is born. How poor was Mary and Joseph? Reading God's Word. When it came time for Mary's purification, they could not afford to buy a lamb. Think about that, folks. They couldn't afford to buy a lamb, but they had the Lamb of God with them that was going to take away the sins of the world. Think about that. They couldn't afford a lamb. What did they do? They had to provide the the bare minimum that the law would allow. Two turtle doves or two pigeons. Think about that. That's how poor our Lord and Savior grew up. He grew up having to do hard, manual labor. Joseph was a carpenter. Everybody knows my family. We've been carpenters our whole life. I know what it is to do carpenter work, hard, manual labor. What does that tell you? That Jesus went to bed a many a nights, muscle sore, tired where he had to work with the sweat of his brow. Think about it, folks. This is a picture of Jesus. This is how a picture of how poor Jesus become. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, He come down and He was poor. Think about that. Jesus was poor His whole life. I thought about it. He had no home. No home, folks. He says in Matthew 8 and 20, The foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay His head. Think about it. Jesus only went home with people. That invited him to go home with. I read over in the gospel. He was talking with the Pharisees. And it said that they went home. And Jesus went off all alone. Think about that. How many nights do you think Jesus had to stretch out on that cold, hard ground and maybe go to sleep? Because no one invited him home with him. Think about that. Jesus is no intruder. Jesus only went where people allowed him to go. You have to invite him into your home, folks. Think about that. He's no intruder today. Jesus will knock on your heart's door, but you have to open up your heart's door and let Jesus in. He's no intruder. 
Jesus had no home. Think about that. This is just a picture how poor Jesus was. He had no money. He fed the hungry multitude. What did he have to do? He had to borrow a little kid's lunch. Think about it. When the crowd pressed him, he had to borrow Peter's boat. He didn't have no boat. Nothing material will you find that Jesus had. He had to borrow a little donkey when he rode into Jerusalem. A triumphal entry, folks. He had to borrow an upper room to eat the Passover meal with his disciples. Think about it. He had to borrow another man's cross. That wasn't his cross. You know whose cross it was? That was my cross. I should have been on that cross. Folks, that was your cross. Jesus borrowed that cross. And he had to borrow a rich man's tomb. But boy, he wasn't going to need that tomb long, was he? Think about that, folks. Only three days. Because on that third day, he is going to come forth victorious over death, hell and the grave. Folks, I'm glad that Savior was willing to come down and suffer like no man has ever suffered. He was willing to become poor. Why? For my sakes. This is a picture of what we're talking about here this morning. Boy, it's good. That's just a few things to show how poor Jesus really was. But the ultimate experience of poverty is when Jesus would become sin for us. Folks, think about that. He became the poorest of poor. When he hung between the heavens and the earth and my sins, your sins, and the sins of the world was placed on our Lord and Savior. Folks, that's that's how poor he become. Think about that. This enormous sin debt that was placed on our Lord and Savior. Think about all the vile, wicked sins that ever has ever been committed, that ever will be committed. They were placed on our Lord and Savior, folks. Think about that. As He hung between the heavens and the earth, sins were placed there. His Father had to turn His back on Him because He can't look. He said, said, My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? But boy, I thank God when He said it is finished on the cross. Folks, the plan of salvation was finished. Think about that enormous sin debt. My sin debt, your sin debt was paid in full at Calvary. Well, how? By the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. Folks, it's by His blood. Aren't you glad that Jesus was willing to come? Willing to, to become poor. Willing to walk away. Step aside from all His riches and come down here and suffer. For my sake. Suffering for your sake. Folks, think about that. He suffered for the whole world. The whole world could come and be saved if they only would. That's how much Jesus loves. God the Father loves us. He sent His Son to die for us. He gave us the best gift that heaven had. It cost His Son His life. He became poor so we could become rich. Think about it. Aren't you glad this morning that Jesus was willing to become poor so we could become rich? Let's go a little farther. It says that ye through his poverty might be rich. Now why did Jesus go through all this pain, all this suffering? He tells us there, so we could be rich. Folks, he took our place on the cross. Should have been me. Should have been you, but he paid that sin debt. And when I accepted him as my Savior, boy, it gave me a wipe my sin debt away. A clean debt, folks. We ought to be shouting this morning. If that won't put a shout in you, your kindling's wet this morning, folks. We should be shouting this morning. Jesus paid that shit, sin debt. Paid our sin debt. Now what are we as Christians? We are heir to the wealth of the Father. Think about that. I read over in Romans. We're adopted now into the family of God. Think about that. Think about being an heir and a joint heir of Christ, folks. Just like my little mind can't comprehend how rich Jesus really was. Can we comprehend how rich we are? Think about that. 
Our Father owns it all. What I just tried to lay out, and we're an heir and a joint heir to that this morning as Christians. Think about that. That's what we're talking about this morning. We can't comprehend that. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. But we can't even picture. We can't even imagine what God has in store for us this morning because we're heir and a joint heir to Christ. Boy, I thought about riches. That's what people strive for in this life. Think about it. People climbing the ladder of success. They'll run over the top of you trying to get rich. And I thought about all the rich people that have climbed. There's nothing wrong with being rich as long as you don't leave out the most important thing. Think about all the rich people in the world. Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Rockefeller, whoever they might be. Think about it. They have more money than they'll ever spend. But when they close their eyes in death, think about this, folks. They're bankrupt. They're in poverty. Think about that. We that are saved are far richer than they are if they've never accepted Jesus as their Savior. Why? Because they have a sin debt. Nothing to do with the money that they had, but they've overlooked the plan of salvation. Both we that are saved are far richer if we've accepted Jesus as our Savior. Boy, I'm glad that I'm saved this morning. Folks, that's something to be shouting about this morning. Jesus paid the sin debt. Jesus laid it out there, Matthew chapter 16. This verse popped out to me, verse 26. It says, For what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Think about that, folks. You can have all the money in the world and overlook this gift that I'm talking about. God gave us the best gift that heaven could give. His Son come down and died on the cross for our sin. The gift that keeps on giving. Aren't you glad that you're saved this morning? Folks, we're rich beyond compare if we're saved. Think about it. I thought about the peace that I have. I can lay down at night and sleep like a baby. You can't buy that peace with money, folks. If it would, pay rich, they would be buying this peace. You can't buy that peace that only God can give. We have a promise from God that He will supply all of our needs. Think about that. I thought about our Heavenly Father, folks. He makes sure the birds have plenty to eat. I read in His Word where it said that He clothes the fields with flowers and with grass. Think about that. What does that tell us? You can be assured as a Christian, we are going to have clothes on our back and we are going to have food to eat. That is a promise. And then when we close our eyes in death, guess what? We become an heir and a joint heir with Christ, folks. Think about that. We just start to live when we die. Think about that this morning. Boy, that's good. Eh? Boy, I got into this this week. And I, that's, that's what I was talking about up on top of the mountain. The Lord was talking to me, folks. That is good. I'm glad that I'm saved. All this is made possible because Jesus was willing to become poor. He was willing to, to lay aside His robe and His crown and come down here and die in my place. To willing to die in your place. This morning, aren't you glad that Jesus was... He didn't have to. God didn't have to send His Son. But He was willing, folks. What more could God do than send His Son? Think about it. What more could Jesus do than be willing to come? That's all we can do. It's up to us whether we accept this gift that God gave His Son. As we stand this morning, there might be a need here this morning. Have you been adopted into the family of God? Do you have this peace in your heart that I was talking about this morning? Think about that. Have you accepted this gift that God has given us? 
You have to open up your heart's door. Like I said, Jesus is no intruder. He, all He can do is knock. If you're here lost this morning, you're going to have to open up your heart's door. And you're going to have to let Jesus come in. If, if Jesus is knocking on your heart this morning, why don't you come down to the altar? And say, Lord, it's me. I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. Repent of your sin, folks. Jesus died in your place. But see, you have to do something about it. You have to accept Him as your Savior, your Lord and Savior. You might be here this morning out of God's will. Whatever the need is, guess what? Jesus is right for whatever that need might be. Does anybody need to come, folks? I preach the message that God has put on my heart. Folks, I'm just the mailman. Think about it. When I put the mail in the box, it's up to you whether you open the mail and pay the bill. Think about it. I did my part. The burden is off of Doug Masters. Now, what are you going to do with it this morning? Does anybody need to come? Folks, Jesus has done all he can do. He come and died for us. That's all he can do. Does anybody need to come? It's been good to be in God's house. It's good to be saved this morning. It's been good to be here. It's all hearts and mind clear this morning. You'll figure out, Doug Matson, he don't drag people. I give you an opportunity. It's up to you to do something about it. Has anybody got a testimony, anything you like to say for the Lord? Folks, we ought to be happy this morning. We're rich beyond compare. I, I, I won't ever have a whole lot in this life, but I've got all that I need. But when I die, folks, I'm going to be an heir and a joint heir to Christ. Think about that. Let that sink in just for a minute. Anybody got anything you like to say or do? Been good to be in God's house. Remember the service tonight, the dinner and all that. Remember that. And remember our Wednesday night Bible study. I don't know about anybody else. I enjoyed our Wednesday night Bible study. My wife said the same thing. She said, well, you just got through four verses. And I thought, well, that's good. That means you're having a good time with the Lord. Come out and be with our Wednesday night Bible study. Boy, it's a blessing to me. Anybody got anything you like to say or do? Do you care if I go back to the door one more time? We're going to shake hands and tell my wife your name. She can help me remember you as we go out this morning. I'm going to ask brother, is it Kenneth? Is it Kenneth Burrow? I ask you to dismiss us in prayer, brother.